In this lesson, we'll deal with the controls and indicators on the electrical power panel, which has two main sections, one for AC and one for DC. We'll begin at the bottom of the AC section of the panel and work our way up to the top of the DC section. We begin with the IDG fault warning, which is displayed in the associated indicator when an overheat is detected in the oil outlet circuit and or the oil pressure is low. Next to these warning indicators are two IDG push buttons, which are spring-loaded and normally guarded. Once the guard has been lifted, you may momentarily press the push button, three seconds maximum, to disconnect the associated IDG and clear the fault. Here, the guard has been raised for you. Press the push button now. It's important that the IDG is only disconnected when the engines are running at above ground idle and that the push button is not held for longer than three seconds as the disengage mechanism will be damaged. After disconnection, the IDG can only be reset on the ground by maintenance when the engines are not running. There are four generator control push buttons on the electrical power panel. The Gen 1 and 2 push buttons control the connection of the engine generators to the network. Each push button has two states, other than normal, that can be displayed, shown here with Gen 1. Fault in amber, when the generator is automatically disconnected by the GCU, for example, and off reset in white when you disconnect the engine generator. The next control we're going to cover is the APU Gen push button. In its normal on position, it allows the generator to automatically connect to the electrical network if either or both engine generators fail or become unavailable. It has two other states that can be displayed, fault in amber when the APU gen is automatically disconnected by the GCU, for example, and off reset in white when you disconnect the APU gen. Finally, we're going to look at the external power push button. This control is only used when the aircraft is on the ground and external power is available. As you can see here, the green available light is informing you that external power is plugged in and the external power parameters are normal. To utilize the external power and energize the aircraft electrical network, you must press this control push button. Do this now. Once energized, the blue on light is displayed and the supply is delivered to the aircraft network. Note that the ECAM is now powered. In the example shown, Gen 1 and Gen 2 have failed, and the batteries are temporarily supplying the essential services. Before the standby Gen takes over, let's take a look at the AC and DC buses. As the network is supplied by an emergency power supply, the ECAM displays are lost, but the electrical power panel provides one blue and five amber indicator lights so that the status of each bus may be checked. Four of the amber indicators, AC bus 1 off, AC bus 2 off, AC essential bus off, and DC normal bus off, come on amber when they are not electrically supplied by any aircraft source. The other amber indicator, DC essential on battery, is lit when it is electrically supplied by the batteries only. The blue indicator, AC emergency on inverter, is lit when electrically supplied via the static inverter from the DC essential bus. The galley push button in its normal on position allows the main and secondary galleys to be electrically supplied. 
However, if the aircraft is in flight and only one of the three generators is supplying the electrical network, the main galley supply will be lost without any indications in the cockpit. On ground, if the APU generator is overloaded, both main and secondary galleys are shed. Switch on Gen 2. Gen 2 is now supplying AC bus 2, but you must press the shed push button to supply both galleys again. Select it now. In the example shown, AC bus 1 has a fault, and therefore the AC essential bus is not being supplied. To overcome the problem, you may raise the supply override guard and press the push button to directly connect Gen 2 to the AC essential bus. Here the guard has been raised for you. Press the push button now. When pressed, the white on legend comes on to confirm that the generator has connected to the bus. Note that the AC essential bus off and the AC emergency on inverter indications have gone out, but the AC bus warning has remained. In the previous example, we looked at an abnormal situation where you select a single override supply push button. The only time you'll select both push buttons to on is if smoke is detected and the red avionic smoke light is on. This smoke drill will be covered in the Abnormals lesson later in the chapter. There are three battery push buttons on the electrical power panel. If the BCC connects these batteries to the DC essential bus for charging, a green flow bar is displayed. If the BCC detects a charging rate that's too high for one of the batteries, the battery overheat light comes on amber and the affected battery is automatically disconnected. You must then set the associated battery push button to off reset to clear the fault and rearm the battery charger. When charging is complete, the green flow bars go out. When the batteries are switched off, a white off reset appears in the push button and the ECAM displays off in place of the current indicator for the associated battery. If the BCC does not allow the batteries to supply emergency power, the battery override push button may be pressed to force the connection of the batteries to the DC essential bus and through the static inverter to the AC emergency bus. Do this now. When the battery override push button is selected, a white on caption comes on in the push button. The three batteries are now supplying the DC essential bus and the battery overheat detection is inhibited. The DC essential on battery and AC emergency on inverter lights are displayed on the electric power panel. The red avionic smoke light comes on if smoke is detected in the cockpit or avionics bay. A smoke drill ensures that power remains supplied by getting you to switch on both override supply push buttons which directly connect the engine generators to the AC essential and the AC emergency buses. The DC essential bus will also be supplied via the essential TR. This drill will be covered in the abnormals lesson later in the chapter. You can select the land recovery push button to on to recover systems lost during a smoke drill or when both engine generators are lost and the APU gen is unavailable. The recovered systems are ground spoiler control, spoiler and speed brakes, flaps and slats, anti-skid. These systems are detailed in the QRH. If the standby gen fails to automatically start, an amber fault indication is displayed in the push button. To force the operation of the generator, the push button can be pressed as long as the starting conditions are true. You can review these conditions in the emergency power lesson. For now, 
force the standby gen to start. When the push button is selected, a white override caption is displayed to confirm that the generator is running. The DC essential on battery and the AC emergency on inverter lights should be extinguished. If the generator fails to run or a failure is detected by the GCU, the fault indication will again be displayed.